Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and this is my social thread. So today I am opening my So Luxurious box from Little Miss So-and-So and also revealing last month's make as I normally do. So box is here, a um, bit of disclosure. I have actually already opened it because I know that um, over the past couple of months, um, Little Miss So-and-So have not been printing the instructions or sort of the pattern, um, uh, the pattern layout, or the pattern front cover, as it were. Uh, so I wanted to open it up and print that out myself, so I could show you sort of the line drawings and everything relating to that pattern. And so, just to say, I have opened that up. Um, and what should I do first? Uh, should I show you how I went about choosing my fabric and pattern for this month? And I am going to share my screen as I normally do. I think I might need to squeeze over here a little bit. Sorry about the mess of the sewing room at the back. I'm going to share my screen. And as usual, I get an email every month with a link to the website to choose my um, fabric and my pattern. Um, this particular box, So Luxurious, is £60, including postage and packaging. You get three and a half metres-ish of designer fabric, matching thread, a gift, the pattern, and um, all the notions that you need for this for the particular pattern that you've chosen right let's start let me show my screen with you so um i go to the filter and as you can see the first one is so luxurious pattern choice which is for the stretch and it is the plowin patterns joran legging is that how you pronounce it Jaw run leggings or Joe run leggings. I'm not sure. So you can see there you've got straight leggings, shorts and like bell bottom leggings. It's a lovely print actually. It kind of reminds me of, um, well, it doesn't. There you go. All the different pictures there. Um, and there's two um, size bands as well that you can choose from. And then if you go to the stretch fabric that you can choose from, designer stretch fabric. <clears throat> The choices are various Lady McElroy organic cotton jerseys, like polka dots here. You've got some planes, organic cotton jerseys again. Um, and that's that. And then if you go for the woven pattern option, which is the one that I went for, it is the Soho 7 regalia blouse. <coughs> And there you have it. Um, you've got short sleeves and long sleeves, uh, gathered yoke at the front, gathered yoke at the back, and then like a stand-up collar. Um, you could do them in two different lengths as well with a waist tie if you want. I was thinking of turning it into a dress. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do uh, yet. Um, I haven't quite decided. Um, and these are all the options here of the people that have made them. So these are the line drawings. It reminds me of the, um, I'm sure you'll all notice, it reminds me of the um, Friday Pattern Company Sage Brush Top. That's what it is, and I've made that as well. So these are all the fabrics. So Merchant and Mills, I was quite excited to be having uh, to be offered these fabrics because I've never bought them from them before, and they do look like quality sort of um, designer fabrics, and I was quite um, excited to choose one of these. So this is the first one, a mustard carnation Indian cotton, and I think these are sort of hand-dyed as well. Um, and I like that one although I do have fabric that's similar to that so um, I didn't go for that one and um, there's lots of other different prints here this Indian cotton this Indi indigo lotus is quite nice as well um, <coughs> and then the lila block Indian um, cotton this is the one that I actually went for um, which, to be honest with you, I think it looked better online than it does in real life. Um, but I think it's because I'm probably just being over picky about it and looking at it up close. So from far away, it actually looks really pretty. Up close, maybe not my not not what I would have gone for. Um, and then you've got some plain Merchant and Mills as well. And then you've got the Lady and Merkel Roy Linen Chambres, which is a lovely base actually. All these different colours, um, and that was the, the those were the choices for the woven pattern. Uh, woven fabric for the um, woven pattern so I'll show you the fabric that I did choose um, so yeah let me open the box I've just shown my address there now haven't I I should cut that out I will cut that out in the box we get the um, 
little um, note or letter that we always get now, which is quite nice. Uh, she just goes to tell you, describes the uh, the pattern that I've chosen. So how seven regalia blouse, variety of options, stand up or high collar. I didn't know that. A loose and flowy crop version to wear with a high waist or a longer version with an optional waist tie that can be worn tucked in or out. So I might do the longer version that I can tuck in or I might lengthen it even more and make it into a dress. I'm not quite sure. And then there's a really good tip here. If you have chosen a Merchant and Mills Indian cotton, um, then it says for the first couple of washes, place the fabric in a 30 to 40 degree cycle with a handful of table salt, and that will prevent, fix the dye and prevent it from running. First couple of washes. Mm. So do I wash it now? And then once it's done, wash it again. Um, and then you get a QR code for the link for the instructions. So that's that. I get interfacing, uh, which is a lovely, um, is the, how do you pronounce this? Vizeline? Vlizeline? Vlizeline. 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 And it's lovely um, interfacing um, for, that's quite a lot actually. What do I need all that interfacing for? Um, for the neck, I assume. And maybe for the cuffs. Um, for the cuffs, um, for the sleeves. And then the gift this time is a little um, sewing inspired uh, card, greeting card. You have mean stitches, which is really, really lovely. And that's from Little Green Stitches. This, uh, and it's um, UK, UK based. That's really lovely. And it's blank on the inside. So you can just use that as like a little thank you card. And then you get the um, A0 printout for the blouse. And then you get the fabric, which I will show you. Uh, <coughs> I'll show you the fabric, yes. So this is the one that I went for. So up close, you can see there, and as I go further back. Um, what do you guys think? I'm not sure. Um, I think maybe I should have just gone for the mustard version of this, um, but obviously I have this now. I think, I don't know, I think the reason I'm not liking it is because up close it looks quite messy and almost like, it wasn't printed properly, but obviously it's a hand-dyed garment. I assume it's a hand-printed one as well. Um, and so that is just the aesthetic of this particular of this particular fabric. But from far away, it looks much nicer, I think, than up close. Um, so that's the fabric that I've chosen. I could measure it for you. I've, I've got three and a half definitely here. Loads of fabric here, three and a half. But the width is slightly narrower than a normal um, one. So there's a measuring tape there. <laughs> a sewing room without a measuring tape hmm. so yeah it is slightly narrower I would say in the width <coughs> and I definitely have three and a half inches here because there's loads three and a half inches oh, three and a half meters here because that's loads of fabric so I'm thinking of doing let me show you the um, I've clicked on the QR code and I have printed out the um, instructions so these are the line drawings here it's very much a sage brush top um, vibe except that sage brush top doesn't have the collar at all it has the neckties it has the yoke does it have a yoke at the back uh, I think the sage brush top doesn't have a yoke at the back or a gathered yoke at the back I'm not quite sure um, and then you've got the long sleeves or the short sleeves with the cuff you've got gathering at the shoulders as well and gathering at the cuff here so you can go for the crop version long sleeve with the collar um, or the slightly longer tunic version with a tie at the waist with the short sleeves. I am really loving this um, this sleeve here, but I know it's not um, appropriate for this time of year um, because of the weather, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. And I, if I do make the blouse, it's definitely going to be this longer version so I can tuck it in. And um, the reason I went for this pattern uh, is because I quite like the look of it. I have seen... Josie from Fabric Godmother. Um, I think they had it um, had this pattern as part of their what's their thing called wardrobe um, something wardrobe. I can't remember what their um, subscription box is called, but their Fabric Godmother wardrobe subscription box. She was wearing um, hers, and uh, this was the pattern they had in their subscription box. I'll pop up a photo of her wearing it in Fabric Godmother uh, material. It was really really lovely, and that's why I fell in love with this blouse. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Um, I was thinking, I don't know, would this be a bit too much if it was a dress? Like, I mean, it is the right colour for this time of the year, autumn, winter, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm just all over the place. I don't know. So I think 
the long sleeve version is more autumnal I could just lengthen this and put a tie so do the tie and lengthen it or which I won't be able to wear actually now because I am breastfeeding or what I could do is I could um I was going to do I was going to try and see if I could draft like a button placket at the front and then add a gathered skirt to the bottom like taper this wasted a bit add a gathered skirt put a um button placket at the front uh, so I can wear it as a dress or if I just am feeling a little less inventive I will just keep it as a blouse and I can obviously lift the blouse up for breastfeeding access anyhow and um, but I am still really liking these sleeves I mean I love this cuff here I don't think I have I think the only thing that I have that's similar to this is the Anna Allen Anthea blouse which has a thinner cuff actually not a thinner a narrower cuff uh, but I'm really really liking that anyhow that's what I'm going to do with this fabric um I am going to pre-wash it as she says using the salt <coughs> Um, and this particular pattern goes from a size, ooh, size zero zero, never heard of that before, size zero zero, bust of 31 inches, waist of 23 and a half inches, all the way to a size 20, which is a bust of 47 inches and a waist of 39 and a half inches. So that is that one. Um, also in my box, just to say that I had ordered some um stretch denim from little miss so and so prior to getting my box and what they've done they've just put it all in the same box to save on postage so i might as well just show you that as well it literally is just some plain blue denim stretch denim it's like a bright blue stretch denim and i bought two meters of that and i'm planning to make <laughs> i have all these plans I'm planning to make either the <coughs> Ziggy moto jacket from Stylark, which is like, you know, the leather moto jackets that you get. And I was looking to um, purchasing some leather and it's really, really expensive. <laughs> so I've decided to do a denim version of it. So it'd be like a different take on a denim jacket. So a moto jacket in denim. Um, so that will fit. Um, I need two meters for that. Or I could also make the Tommy skirt, which is the midi skirt from Stylark as well. I have seen in the high street recently the denim maxi skirt or midi skirt, depending on how tall or short you are, is quite popular um, for this autumn season. So it's long and then you'd wear it with boots and sort of a sweater on top. And I'm quite liking that look. So that is the plan for this. Either the Stylark Tommy denim skirt or the Stylark Ziggy denim jacket. This one is, that's the one there. And then I get my matching thread as well as part of the all set to sew kit. Not all set circuit, so luxurious all set circuit. Yep, that one there. Um, and that's that. So I will hopefully be making that up this month. In the meantime, I would like to show you what I made for last month. Let me just get this fabric out of the way. So last month's pattern was the Comey uh, cardigan by Wardrobe by Me. Um, and the reason why, just going back again, why I decided to open the box prior uh, to um, videoing it so that I could print out the pattern because last month I found that I wasn't able to, I was looking at the instructions via my phone, which was great. You know, I save on paper, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes I found it difficult to, you know, sort of, I, I just wanted to have a quick look at, at the instructions, but then I had to sort of go onto my phone, put the password in, you know, and then look it up. And anyway, I just found that I much prefer having a printed um, instruction booklet next to me. So it's easier to to look through and also easier, easier to show you. So I actually haven't got the Comey cardigan printed out, as I say, because I looked on my phone. I will pop up a photo of it. And it's basically... Um, a cardigan which is actually quite clever because you can either do it in both woven or knit fabric um, although for um, the options for when I was choosing the fabric they um, had this only as a knit option rather than as a woven option so for the woven option you had there was the, another jacket by Helen's Closet I think it was called the Pony Coat Pony Coat uh, or pony jacket by Helen's Closet. So that was the woven version, which is very similar to this Comey <coughs> cardigan, which is the knit version that they were offering. And the fabric I chose was an organic uh, Lady McElroy uh, jersey. And I went for a blush pink colorway. And I will say the project wasn't a complete success, 
because I mean I'll show you in a bit so basically the Comey cardigan photo is above it's a shawl kind of cardigan shawl colored cardigan um it's like mid thigh length um you've got pockets and you've got a tie around um center back seam um and that's it really um you can do it in both woven and knit fabrics I went for the knit obviously as I said because you only had the options for the knit and I went for a pink jersey <coughs> And this is my pink jersey here that I'll show you. That's the sleeve. And um, as I say, it wasn't that successful for me because um, um, I stretched out the fabric as I was making it, which is really, really annoying. Um, and I just don't think... I don't think it was very successful. I think that it would have worked really well in a woven fabric instead because you would have you wouldn't have the stretching out issue and also I find because it was it is quite floppy and it's got the shawl and it's got the tie at the waist it kind of almost looked like a dressing gown and I don't know why that is because there are a lot of ready to wear cardigans that are exactly the same style as a dressing gown but they don't look like a dressing gown so it must have been the fabric that I've chosen uh, maybe as a jersey I mean dressing gowns aren't really made in jersey maybe they are uh, but there you go so I, I, I'm not completely satisfied with the make I think my favorite part is the collar because I like how how well that's been um, sort of um, done that's the, the collar and then the facing all um interfa not interfaced or overlocked on the inside uh, the pocket as you can see i have stretched out which is a bit annoying um and um also with these little belt loops here it just tells you to attach it to the seam um and I didn't really know how to do that. The, there wasn't actually a picture that showed how they attached it. And so I attached it in this fashion, which obviously isn't the right way to do it because it just looks really odd. Normally with the belt loops, you would just uh, fold them over and attach them like on the seam, not within the seam. So maybe I read that wrong, but it said the, the instructions said to me, attach it in the seam. And that's what I've done. Um, I can't unpick it now because that's going to stretch out even more. Um, and as I say, with the tie, it looks like a dressing gown. I will pop up some photos of myself wearing it. And what I have decided to do is not wear it with a tie. And I think it looks a lot better. And it's just a great sort of a bit of a, you know, like a secondary layering piece. Like if it's just a bit cold, which it is getting a bit cold now, uh, just to wear over like top and, and jeans or what have you. Um, but yeah, as I say, I'm not 100% happy with this one because um, I think I've stretched out the fabric and I haven't done it justice. Um, but there you go. Things happen that's what that's what um sewing is all about isn't it learning a new skill every time and if you make a mistake just to pick yourself up and keep going because there are more projects to to screw up in the future um uh, but yes there you go that's that one um and what else was i going to say instructions were fairly straightforward apart from the belt loop option uh the belt loop putting it in between the <coughs> seams i mean that's how i read it and i didn't understand how they wanted me to do it because there wasn't a specific picture for that part also with the pockets actually i will say with the pockets there it's like a pocket bag and um, it's quite a nice way of constructing it from the inside but then from the outside it tells you to um what's it called top stitch it it tells you to top stitch it let me just show you it tells you to top stitch it right but it didn't tell you it doesn't tell you to stop top stitch it from the actual lining of the pocket it tells you to top stitch it like straight down curved and up and i just thought well how would you get that straight line i guess you could you would have to draw it on and then stitch it down because there's nothing to follow so i just followed the <coughs> stitching line and i found that easier so i followed the stitching line from the back and i just top stitched it all the way down this way because otherwise i would have to um, sort of draw one on and because the fabric had stretched down because it was jersey i just didn't think i'd be able to do a really nice straight sort of pocket all the way around so i just followed the the stitching of the um of the overlocked um seams so that was that anyway Moving onwards and upwards, um, as I say, not every um, item that you do um, is successful, um, but I have learned things along the way, um, not to stretch out my fabric. I don't know, how do you not stretch out fabric? I suppose with jersey, 
you know, pulling it through. Maybe I did have a walking foot on uh, because my faff machine has one integrated into it. But still, unfortunately, it wasn't the best result for me. But there you go. I'm um, hoping you enjoyed that regardless. Um, thank you so much for watching. And in the meantime, I will see you. I'm off to do another vlog after this for my roundup of the month for September. And I will see you hopefully next time for my next unboxing and um, garment reveal. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.